I want to speak to you about the levels that God has for you as individuals, but as Union Church on every campus. I want to speak in a builder's word into this house that you are building. And I don't know if you noticed something, but over the last few years when we had the pandemic and when we had all the craziness that was happening in the world politically and economically, when we've seen all the tension inside the church and outside of the church, I think through that season, the enemy had a sub plot. And one of the subplots that we were not aware of is that in that season, it's like we all began to begin to live our life lower. I think we all kind of began to take a step back. And for some, we even took a step out. And I want to say to some of our online family, we love you, but we miss you. We, we, we know that for some of you, you can't be in the room, but some of you, you just had a season and you stepped back and it meant you stepped out. And it's time for you to hear the voice of God calling you back in to where you belong, to the community you belong in, to the family that you belong in, because the enemy has a subplot. He didn't just want social distancing. He wanted spiritual distancing. He didn't just want you to check out for a moment. He wanted you to check out permanently. He didn't just want you to to take a step to the side. He wanted you to take a step all the way out of the things that God has called you to be all the way involved in. And it was like in this last season, I feel like across the church, we got altitude sickness. We got like a fear of heights. We, we got like fearful about giving more because what will the economy do? We got fearful about throwing ourselves in because what might happen if I go all in? We got a little fearful about commitment and connection because we were not sure because of everything we were reading and seeing. And all of a sudden, as we began to live lower, we began to talk lower and expect lower and act lower and, 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 and see God in a way that before we saw Him from a higher level, but now we've adjusted and we're lower and, and we're involved in lower conversations and in lower arguments and in, and in lower stuff that before we would have said, no, I, I don't live at that level. I think we have got a fear of heights. And I'm here to let you know that you are in a house that is called to go higher. So you're going to get have to get over your fear of heights really, really quickly because where you're called is not lower. Where you're called is higher. And there are so many more things that God has for you individually and for this house, but it will require a shift. It will recla- require a climb because Isaiah tells us that God is calling us higher. He says, hey, my ways are higher. My thoughts are higher. And so God is inviting us to work where he lives. And there is no version of the Bible that says, hey, my ways are higher, but if you can't get there, I'll bring them lower. Hey, my thoughts are higher, but if you don't want to lift your thoughts to a higher level, I'll just live with you with lower level thoughts. No, God's invitation is always to come higher, always to move further. And so I believe you're in a season as a church and as a body where the challenge is on to begin to work some muscles that you have not maybe worked for a while. You've got stuck in a season of lower, but God is calling you higher and the higher requires a stretch that at first will be painful, but it will remind you of the thing that you are called to be. It's kind of like me. I, I have, I run and, and I began to run of several years ago and, and I got a good pace up and cause I live in England and the weather's not great. I had to get a treadmill. And so I run on the treadmill and, and I run on that thing and, and it has a button on that thing that I really am offended by. I don't like the button. I don't know why the button is there. It just like stares me down every time I get on that that thing and the button says the word incline and like nobody not got time for that like I'm doing a good enough job getting on this sucker and running on the flat don't be telling me I could be doing something that requires more effort and more energy I just like it the way I like it Pastor Stephen, don't be preaching an incline message. I like it how I like it. Don't be adding a leadership conference. I like it how I like it. Don't be telling me to serve on a Saturday. I don't serve on Saturday. People serve me on Saturday. I like it how I like it. And 
see, I, I, I got a good pace on my treadmill. I, I, I cannot run some of you in here. I guarantee it. I, and I'm running on my treadmill and I have my monitor on. And on my monitor, it has the screen telling me that I am running through the Grand Canyon. Yes, I am. And I am on my treadmill and I'm fake waving at the fake people walking in the fake Grand Canyon. And I am doing my distance and I get off that thing and I am tired and I am sweating, but I get off exactly where I got on. I have expended so much energy and I have gone nowhere. In my mind, I think I've been to the Grand Canyon and back. But the truth is, I've gone nowhere. And I think the enemy has got some of you stuck on a treadmill. You are tired and you are worn out, but you're no further this year than you were last year. You are tired and you're worn out, but your marriage is still dysfunctional. You are tired and you're worn out, but you're not seeing any breakthroughs in the way you want to see breakthroughs. So the question I have to ask you is, is God the problem or is where you're living the problem? See, God's a good father. We sing songs about it. We say that he's a good father, but we often don't understand that because he's a good father, he's going to parent you well. And sometimes we don't like the way that God parents us, just like our kids don't like it when we parent them, because we're parenting them not to keep them where they're at, but to progress them to where they need to be. So God's ways are higher, okay? And and so think of it this way. God has some things for you individually, but he has some things for you as union church corporately, and they are higher things. They are higher ways. They are higher callings. They are higher breakthroughs. They are higher provisions. They are higher advancements. They are higher, but God is not going to bring them lower. It's kind of like this. If I was to invite the Chandler family over for dinner, I'd be like, you guys come. We would love to have you over. But about 10 minutes before they came over for dinner, I would say to my older grown children and my husband, the Chandlers are on their way. Everybody, you know what you need to do. And my family would begin to take everything that is valuable and begin to put it higher. Because we know the Chandler family have three small people attached to them. And those three beautiful small people have a level of immaturity. That means they do not know the difference between my expensive ornament and their plastic rattle. They do not know the difference between my glass candlestick and their drumstick. And so when immaturity steps into our house, I'm not trying to stop them from enjoying something. I'm trying to protect them from holding something they're not yet mature enough to handle. I have to move the things that are valuable higher up until their immaturity finds maturity so that what I put in their hands can be useful and beneficial instead of actually detrimental and hurtful to them that don't understand. You can't smash this on the drumstick because this is glass. This is plastic. They don't know the difference. And God is a good father. So some of you are asking for higher things, but you're living at lower levels. Like, 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 like God, just give me a million dollars. God's like, it's higher, baby. It's higher. And when you learn to tithe off your $30, maybe we can talk about the million dollars. But until you are faithful in little things, I can't entrust you in greater things. God, give me the girl of my dreams. Give me that woman of my dreams. He's like, when you stop being an idiot, we can talk about the woman of your dreams. But until you get that into place, I can't hand you this because immaturity will handle this poorly. So God is not trying to keep you lower. God is inviting you higher, but higher means you're going to have to work on some muscles that the lower currently is not working on. My sister lives 
in Switzerland and I recently went to Switzerland. But let me tell you, you have to go higher all the time in Switzerland. There's not many flat areas. Everything is an incline. But if I really wanted to see the true beauty of Switzerland, I had to work some muscles that I don't normally work. And if you want to see the true breakthroughs and the true beauty of what God has for you and your future and this house, it's time to get some muscles working that maybe have not been working for a while. It's time to get some things stretching that maybe have not stretched for a while. You've had a week of stretch, but I guarantee you there are some people in this house who have stretched more than others. Some people who showed up and served. Some people that were here, all those things. Some people that gave beyond what was comfortable while others just came, stood up, sat down, stood up, sat down. That's going to work a couple of butt muscles, but that is not what God's after in this season. He's after the whole church stretching, the whole church climbing, the whole church moving, the whole church realizing, man, I thought I was only good for the flat, but I am good for the hilltop. So I want to show you a story in the Bible where God asks one of his servants to hit the incline, asks him to go higher, asks him to take a step that is beyond where his level of comfort is, asks him to go into an area that's going to require from him more trust, more stretch, more understanding of the God he serves. And it was not easy. And I'm here to tell you, it's not always easy when you hit the incline. And this story is probably one of the hardest stories to preach from because when you read it, you could think, man, God is really unkind. Why would he do this? This is a stretch too far. And the story's in Genesis 22. And the story is about when God visits Abraham and says to Abraham, you're going to have to sacrifice your son. And there's three stages in this climb that Abraham is going to be invited to come higher upon. And there are three steps in the climb that God invites you and I to come higher upon. And I want to let you know all three so that you can see all three and identify all three and then choose whether you want these in your life. Abraham had to have elevation. He had to have preparation. And it was also he could have revelation. So let me start at the beginning. The whole chapter is entitled, Abraham Tested. Well, let me stop you right there. We already don't like this chapter because we don't like to be tested. We're rebuking the testing. We're like, get away from me, Satan. Stop testing me. The problem is sometimes it's not Satan, it's God. (laughs) And there's no rebuking him out of your life. He's here to stay. (laughs) And so maybe we have to change the way we view tests. God is not testing you to punish you. God is testing you to graduate you. In other words, is the driving instructor trying to punish you when he sits you in your driving test? Or is the driving instructor trying to get you to a place where you can have the keys and the car to yourself? He's not testing you to punish you. He's testing you to graduate you. Is the exam board trying to test you to punish you? Or are they trying to test you because you've studied thus far and now you're ready to qualify in the field that you want to be qualified in? The test is not to punish. The test is to graduate. So if you begin to see God testing you as a way of graduating you, you will see that if God is testing you, he's saying, hey, I see in your life something that you have worked hard upon. It is time to qualify you to a new level of freedom and a new level of access and a new level of opportunity. So we should not be worried when God tests us. We should actually see it as a compliment. You testing this because you see something in me that's ready to go to a new level? So it says... Genesis 22, sometime later, God tested Abraham and he said to him, Abraham, here I am. He replied, let me stop right there. I am one of those preachers who stops every verse. (laughs) I just find stuff in every verse. I'm like, oh my gosh, elevation begins with location. 
God's like, Abraham, he's like, here I am. Remember when you were in school? If you can throw your mind that far back for some of you. Remember when you were in school and the teacher would call your name and you had to say, here, sir, here, ma'am, to let them know you're present. I'm here. I'm here for the lesson. God does the same. He calls your name. He's like, where are you at? He's not going to start showing you an elevation till you first say where you're really at. <laughs> Stop trying to get other people to answer for you in class. Stop sending your wife to church and say, just show our group attendance when there's no group here. Comes a point we have to say to your kids, no, you have to be present for yourself. You have to show up for yourself. You have to want Jesus for yourself. You have to say, here I am. Yeah. Some of you are like, well, here I am is I'm in doubt. Or here I am is I am in unbelief. Or here I am is I have not done good things this past few weeks. God already knows. God already knows where you are. He's just waiting for you to be honest about where you are. And from that place, he'll begin to take you higher. Abraham, here I am. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moira and sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on the mountain that I will show you. Well, first of all, let's just back up. Because scripture says that God said, take your son, your only son. Well, is God having a bad day? Is he having one of those days where he's just forgetful? Because Abraham doesn't just have a son. There's not an only son. There's another son that he has that God knows about. There's not just an Isaac. There's another son. And so why is God saying, take your only son as if the other son doesn't exist? Because often the elevation is not about all the stuff in your life. The elevation is about the thing that God entrusted to your life. See, the root word in the scripture here of only is not actually only. The root word actually means the unique promise. So God's saying, take your son, your unique promised son, and I need you to lay it down. God often doesn't want all our stuff. He wants the thing that he spoke to you, the dream that he gave you, the gift that he entrusted to you, the resource that he put in your hands. He wants that thing laying down before that thing has a hold of you in a way it should not. God says this elevation is going to be about not accumulation, but consecration. And then God says, and I am going to show you the mountain. Do you know how many of us are exhausted because we're climbing the wrong mountain? Because we chose the elevation. Because we said, oh God, I'm going to climb this mountain of my career. I'm going to climb this mountain of popularity. I'm going to climb this mountain of social followers. I'm going to climb this mountain of success. Oh God, if you could just bless me on the mountain. God's like, I didn't choose that mountain. You're on your own. That mountain's all about accumulation. My mountains don't look like that. My mountains look like consecration. God's elevation is never about more of you. God's elevation is about less of you and more of Him. God's elevation is never about your name in lights. God's elevation is about His name in lights. God's, God's whole way round of climbing and elevation begins with decrease before it's ever increased. So God's like, I'm going to take you up a mountain, but before you go up the mountain, you're going to have to decrease. You're going to have to sacrifice. You're going to have to be willing to actually lay some things down. And if you are in a season where you're saying, God, I want to go higher. The second question should be, but God, show me the mountain. <laughs> Don't let me pick anymore. I picked in the past and it has worn me out. I have been stressed out and burnt out. I got all the stuff and the trinkets and gadgets and felt nothing. God, I don't want to climb the wrong mountain anymore. Show me the mountain. When God chooses the mountain, 
You begin to realize that the mountain, the elevation is the reason why you now are instructed in your preparation. You need God to show you the mountain because the mountain determines the second step, which is preparation. The choice of mountain chooses the choice of preparation. In other words, if you were to say to me, Charlotte, this afternoon, we would love to take your family up the mountains of Maryland. We would love to show you the areas. We'd love to take you up the local hills and climb with us for the afternoon. I would say, okay, I will go get ready and I will go and get my sneakers and my sunscreen and a picnic blanket because we're going up the local hills together. (laughs) But if you said, Charlotte, this afternoon, me and my family would love for you to jump on an airplane with us because we are going to climb Mount Everest. I would not be packing my sunscreen and my picnic blanket. I would be packing an ice pick and climbing boots and ropes and safety equipment. Why? Because the elevation chooses my preparation. And some of you are trying to get up the mountain with all the wrong stuff. The wrong people, the wrong equipment, the wrong resources. And you are heavy laden going up a mountain because you're carrying things that you should never have carried. So I don't know about you, but I'm just going to be honest. If this story was written about me, verse 3 would not be in it. Because God just told him to sacrifice his son, to go up the mountain he would show him. And verse 3 says, early the next morning... Abraham is chopping the wood and good to go. If I was this person in this story, verse 3 would read, early the next morning, she called all her friends and said, you all need to reboot the enemy with me. I am being plagued by bad thoughts. I am being attacked by the devil himself. I am hearing things about sacrifice and I know it's from the pit of hell. We, there's no way that this is, I, I would be holding a prayer vigil. I would be calling the pastors. I'd be like, uh-uh, no way. I would be locking my doors and not going back outside. And let me tell you something. Verse 3 is why some of you never get up your mountain. Because you put delay where there should be obedience. You put opinions where there should have been conviction. You put decisions, indecision where there should have been decisions. God said it and now you're still talking about it. And we're three years in and you're still discussing it. And you know that God said it. You know God said, ditch the guy. You know God said, you don't need those people in your life. You know God said, quit that thing. You know God spoke to you about the mountain and the sacrifice. But you had a conversation and you let it slide. And you let it go on the back burner of your life. And you're wondering why you're still exhausted but no higher up the mountain. Because you will not make the decision he made. The elevation begins to choose the preparation. If I really want to go there, then I really have to chop the wood. I mean, think about it. He went straight to get wood and began chopping wood, knowing every piece of wood he chopped was wood he would lay his son on. He didn't have a servant chop it. He didn't have someone else chop it. He was doing the preparation for the elevation. He, he, he packed up the wood. And notice what he didn't pack. He didn't pack a ram. I mean, he could have slid a little little ram in that bag. No one would have known. Hey God, I'm just going to put a ram in in case you don't come through. I'm just going to prepare like I believe you, but also prepare in case I don't believe you. I'm going to prepare like I'm really going for it, but I'm also going to prepare an option if I don't like what it looks like when I go for it. I'm going to prepare to be all in at Union Church, but I'm also going to keep my foot in the pool of this other church in case I prefer that church over this church. I'll keep my options open. So you have to look at how you're packing Because it tells God what you believe in. So he's chopping the wood. This is the wood. Because this is what I'm going to need for the sacrifice. And then he's even preparing the company. 
He says he took two servants with him. He didn't take a posse. He didn't invite the whole family. He didn't invite auntie and sister and brother so-and-so. He didn't get all the group going on. Why? Because he knew you have not heard what I have heard. And if I try to take you with me up this mountain, at some point on this mountain, you're going to tell me I'm crazy. You're going to be uncomfortable. You're going to get a bunion. You're going to say it's too hot. You're going to say I need some chicken. You're going to say let's go back down the mountain. And now I'm going to have to change my plan to accommodate the conversation and the company that God never told me to bring. He took two servants and he got them so far up the mountain and then he realized you cannot come any further. Thank you for coming thus far. You helped me thus far. But then it says in verse 5, he said to the two servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. To the elevation God told him, listen to his next words, and we will worship, listen to the next words, and then we will both come back to you. There was just a preparation that God's going to come through one way or another. And then he says, you can't come any further because he realized when I get a little further, I'm going to have to pull a knife out and and potentially put it in my son. And at that point, you're going to wrestle me to the ground, take the knife out of my hand, call me crazy and tell me this is not of God. So I can't have interference in my place of obedience. So I love you, but you can't come any further with me because you have not heard what I have heard. And by the way, this is the first time in the Bible the word worship is ever used. He says, I'm going to worship, which for any budding worship leaders out there, anyone who wants a shiny microphone and a gold record and an album deal, I just need to redefine what worship is. Worship is putting a knife in your dream. It's sacrificing your thing to do God's thing. (laughs) So maybe we should say, come and join the sacrifice team. Let's see how many people sign up. I'm going to go worship. I'm going to sacrifice. So God shows him the elevation. Now he's doing the preparation. He's chopped the wood. This is what I have to carry. Nothing else. Now he's choosing the company. But this is how, how far you come. And nowhere else. Next, he's prepared for the conversation that nobody wants to have because Isaac is now going with him. And by the way, I don't know how you read your Bible, but Isaac was not a little boy. The Bible commentary tells us that Isaac was probably in his early 20s. So Isaac is fully aware what is going on. And Isaac is the one carrying the wood. So he knows, dad knows, there is a moment coming where a hard conversation is going to happen. This son is going to turn to me and go, dad, like he did, where's the sacrifice? What's going on? And if you're not prepared for hard conversations, you will never get to the place that God has called you to get. If when the hard questions asked or the confrontation comes or the challenge is made of you, if at that point you begin to feel like I'm uncomfortable and start backing down the mountain, you will never get to the place of breakthrough. Some of you are one hard conversation away from your breakthrough. Where's the sacrifice? It's okay, son. God's going to provide. He didn't give any more words than he needed to. He could have sat down and said, man, he, he, needs, a, he needs a five hour explanation of why I am doing this today. I need to explain it all to him. I mean, he's my son. He said very few words. Here's what I realized when I was in Switzerland. I'm visiting my sister and began to go up some mountains. I would be chatting away and taking selfies and we'd be having a great time. But the higher we began to get, the air began to get thinner. And so my words became less. Because now I really need to use my words for what mattered. 
Down here, I had all the energy to use all the words. But up here, because I'm going higher, my breath is shorter. So I don't have time to talk about what I don't have time to talk about because my air is thinner and my words are weightier. So I'm sorry, but I can't get into that with you because I'm going higher and I don't have enough oxygen for that and for that. Down here, you have all the words in the world for your Instagram and your social media and your Facebook fighting. All the time in the world for your opinion about how they should have done it better, how I could have preached it better, how I could have said it better, how we should do it different. We have all the time in the world down here because you go nowhere. You're on the flat. When people have a lot of opinions about a lot of things, I often think to myself, wow, you must be living at a level where you have a lot of time for a lot of oxygen to be used for a lot of stuff that doesn't matter. But when you get around people who are climbing and going somewhere, you find that words sound different. They're heavier, they're weightier. There's a wisdom to them. You lean in more because you realize they're not wasting words. Some of you want conversations. I just need to sit with Pastor Stephen. I just need to express all these things to him. Really? We're about climbing a mountain here, guys. Does that conversation belong here? Or does that conversation belong here? And when we're asking someone that's trying to get us here to have a conversation that's down here, you have to realize you're asking for all the progress to be undone so that we can regress back to what we've talked about a thousand times. So when we're going higher, you have to really think about what you're about to ask. Is what I'm going to ask going to help us get to where God is assigning us to go? Or is what I'm going to ask going to ask everyone to take some step? Do you know how hard it is to walk backwards down a mountain? Do you know how dangerous it is? That's when casualties happen. I was taking many, many selfies at the bottom of those mountains in Switzerland. I ain't pulling my camera out to take any selfies at the top. First of all, I don't want to lose my iPhone. And second of all, I don't want to fall off the edge of the cliff. So if you've got time for selfies, you're lower. Are we still friends? It's okay. I'm leaving soon. Pastor Stephen will be back. It'll all be good. You know, Revelation 2 verse 29 has this verse and it says this. It says, do you not hear the wind words? The Spirit is trying to blow through the church. I think there are so many wind words we're missing. You know, a friend of ours is a farmer. And on his farmland in England, he built wind turbines. And we went one day with our kids to visit. And these wind turbines, they were so big. I mean, like, you know, they're big. But when you get underneath them, they like go on and on and on into the sky. And I just asked him one day, I was like, why so high? He's like, well, we have to build them to get past all the interference, all the buildings, all the wires, all the poles, all of the things that that are high. We have to go higher than them because when we go higher than them, we catch the strongest wind and that wind becomes renewable energy. Can I tell you, if you get past some conversations, you're going to find a wind that gives you renewable energy. But right now you're in conversations that's sucking up all your energy and you're wondering why you're exhausted all the time. And God's like, you just have to come higher than what they said and what she thinks and what's your opinion. Right now, the church is being dragged into every single conversation on the planet. And God's like, does anyone hear the wind words or are we all just listening to everyone else's words? Because the wind words have renewable energy in them. They'll keep you going way beyond all the opinions and all the different things out there. There are wind words blowing through the church, but so many people are not hearing them. God chooses the mountain. Abraham does the preparation. And the elevation and the preparation is all about the revelation. 
So he's getting higher and the company's got thinner. He's getting higher and the conversations got clearer. And as he gets, listen to this. As he gets to the place where God told him to go. When he reached the place, verse 9, that God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there. He arranged the wood on it. He bound his son. He laid him on the altar on top of the wood. And then he went to grab his hand and grab the knife to slay his son. And then, and only then, does he hear, Abraham, Wait a minute, I remember that voice. Here I am. The same call that he heard at the bottom of the mountain. Only does he hear again at the place of the knife lift of obedience. God has not spoken once between the bottom of the mountain and the place of obedience. You would think, wouldn't you, halfway up, God would be like, you can do it, you can do it, you got this, you're doing great. Nothing. Abraham, here I am. Okay, I'm going to show you a mountain. Nothing. Nothing while he chops the wood. Nothing while he leaves the company behind. Nothing in the difficult conversation. Nothing when he's laying the wood out. Nothing when he's binding his son. Nothing when he's pulling the knife out. Only at the point of final obedience in the place God told him to go, does he hear, Abraham, here I am. But wait a minute. The second here I am is not the same as the first here I am. He's not getting off the treadmill in the same spot that he was before. The second here I am is at the top of the mountain that he's never been to the top of before. And where the air is clearer and the vision is brighter. And at this here I am, finally, the elevation, the preparation leads to a moment of revelation. And he says out loud, today I call this mountain, a word that had never been used in Scripture. I call this mountain Jehovah Jireh. The Lord is my provider because I couldn't have that revelation at base camp but I have the revelation at the place of sacrifice of God being a provider that I never had in the comfort of my tent and I'm telling you church there are revelations that you are yet to know of God there are aspects and avenues of his nature and his goodness There are avenues of His power and His awe and His majesty that the world have no clue about. No one has yet seen all that God is and all of His power. But if you want to see a revelation that no one else has seen, you've got to come to the elevation that God is calling you to. You can't see a water walking Jesus from the shore. You can't see the one who speaks a word and makes what is dead come to life unless you need a resurrection. You don't know the levels of its provision until you put the knife of sacrifice in all the things that you are trying to keep going all by yourself. Jehovah Jireh. I heard it, but now I've seen it. And there is a mountain. There's a mountain for Union Church. And your pastors are saying to God, show us the mountain. And that mountain's going to cause you to have to stretch, give, serve, say yes, show up, be a part. It's time for some of you to be mature enough To not need all the time someone to hold your hand. To tell you 55 times, you can do it. 
Because there are people behind you that need you. Like those children coming to my house. It's time for you to now be able to take the candlestick. It's time for you to be able to be entrusted with something that is of higher value. So you need to leave your immaturity behind you because I need you to take this because I have to take this. Some of you are exhausted and you're blaming God. But it's not God's fault you're up that mountain. You chose it. God, I don't want to do my mountains anymore. Show me the mountain. God, I don't want to hold this gift so tightly anymore. I am willing to lay it down. I'm willing to put a knife in it if that's what you need, God. I'm willing to walk away if that's what you're requiring of me. God, anything but stay stuck. Show me the mountain and I'll do the preparation. Because God, I don't want to live my life without a revelation that is mine to have. So all across the room, I'm going to ask us to stand to our feet. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is more than enough. And I don't know what your dream is. I don't know what it is that you're saying, oh God, I would love this. But God's a good father. And he's going to say, you want this? I am not trying to keep it from you. But I'm trying to help you get there in a way that means when you get it, you can keep it. You can hold it. You can be entrusted with it. And I believe there are individual mountains that God wants to show you. There's preparation that some of you need to get to. You've had too much delay. And it's time to get on with the preparation that God needs you to do. And for some of you, you just need to be present and say, here I am. And sign up for the journey. And so I want us right now, if you're saying, God, I, I want you to show me the mountain. God, I, I want to hit the incline. Just close your eyes and just, if that's you, just lift your hands. Just saying, God, I, I want to stay stuck. I, I want to go higher. I, I want in this season to go up the right mountain, not the wrong mountain. And I'm praying this over you as individuals. And I'm praying this over you as a church. God, I pray today as every hand that is raised is representing a willingness to surrender. God, I thank you that you are the God who does not test us to punish us, but you test us to graduate us. And God, I thank you that you are graduating this house. You are graduating Union Church into a new level of influence and into a new level of adventure. And God, I thank you that as you continue to show the leadership, the mountain, God, I pray that the elevation would speak to the preparation. I pray that every heart would be begin to prepare. I pray that we'd let go of things that are holding us back. God, I pray that we would use the air well that you give us to breathe. I pray conversations would be clarity and not confusion. I pray we would stop wasting time on the mountainside when God, you've called us to the mountaintops. God, I pray there would be a strength and a stretching. I pray for new muscles to be discovered in the house as we begin to incline with you to new levels and new house. And I pray that this house will be a house of revelation, that they would know who you are, God, in increasing measure. They would know levels of your awe and your wonder, levels of Jehovah Jireh, of God the healer, of God the way maker, of God the miracle worker, in increasing levels. That God, the revelation will be so deep because the incline has been so intentional. Just as eyes are closed, just lower your hand. I'm going to ask one final thing. Today, for some of you, God is showing you the mountain so clear. And it's the mountain called salvation. It's the mountain called surrender. It's the mountain called asking God to forgive you. It's the mountain called getting your life back on track with God. You have been king of your own hill for too long. And now it's time to say, God, I don't want to do it my way anymore. I want to do it your way. And today the call for you, when He says, your name is God, here I am, I'm backslidden. Here I am, I'm not living a great life. Here I am, I'm living a place of regret or running from you. Your admission of that is the beginning of your miracle today. So today, if you're in the room or you're on a campus or online, you say, I need God. 
I need Him as my Saviour. I need Him as my Lord. I need to come back to Him. I simply want you to quickly lift your hand in the air saying, that's me today. That's the mountain for me. Come on, all across the house. Saying, that's for me. I'm backslidden. I've not been right with God for a while. That's where I am today. As you raise your hand, God sees it. You're saying, here I am, Lord. Here I am. God's like, I know that's where you are. I thank you for acknowledging it today. I'm going to meet you right there. I'm going to ask all of us to pray this prayer together to help those raising their hand right now make this decision. So everyone say these words after me. Dear God, today I choose to surrender my life. Today I choose to make you Lord. Today I receive your forgiveness. And I ask you, God, to lead me in your ways. Thank you, Jesus that you sacrificed for me, that you gave your life for me. And today I receive that life in your name. Amen and amen. Come on, let's give all those people a round of applause.